Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, Unity 2018.3 was released. And uh, if you've been waiting for bug fixes on a 2018.1 or 2018.2 feature, you are probably going to see it in here. There are an absolute ton of bug fixes and some new uh, functionality that has been added. Definitely one that people have been crying out for since the beginning of time. So let's jump in and take a look at what is new in 2018.3. Now, of course, I will toss all of these links down below. So uh, don't worry if you're not reading it in real time time. Uh, but the biggest one, by far and away, the one that everyone is going to be super excited for is the improved prefabs. Uh, they've got a full video on this if you want to see it in action. But now what you can do is nest prefabs. And this has really altered the way people have worked in Unity forever. You kind of had to make a decision between making an uber collection prefab or granular prefab. So for example, if you were working on a house that had rooms that in turn had furniture, you would have to decide is the prefab the entire house or is the, the scene going to be distributed as a collection of prefabs that go together to create rooms, to furnish them, etc. Well, now you can actually nest those prefabs inside of each other. So you could create a, a room prefab that contained a table prefab, a chair prefab, and so on. So it really makes it easier to split up your, um, your level designs into a much more logical way. And it should also make, I should think, asset stores, um, the way they ship things, a lot cleaner for your usage as well. So nested prefabs, uh, prefab variants, and prefab mode are going to really change the way you work with prefabs in Unity. And I think for the better across the board. And once again, they do have a video of this in action if you want a little bit more detail. On top of that, we've also got train system improvements. Now, if you've been watching this channel, there's a sale going on right now on the Humble Bundle. And one of the big things in that was Gaia. It's a landscape system. I demonstrated it in an earlier video. Check that out if you're interested. But uh, Gaia had problems working with Unity 2018.2 uh, because the train system doesn't work in the high def pipeline. So you can use Gaia with the standard pipeline, but with the programmable pipelines, it just didn't work. It, uh, trees didn't render correctly. Speed tree trees did not render correctly in the low def or the a real time pipeline or whatever the heck it's called, lightweight, lightweight pipeline. And in the high def pipeline, uh, train didn't work at all. So hopefully Gaia will now work with these train improvements. So it's definitely nice to see that come into this release. Oh, Wrong button. Uh, the next big one is 2D uh, tile maps now have isometric map support. Isometric maps, you know them. Um, the original XCOM, uh, the original Baldur's Gate Infinity Engine series, that is all uh, isometric. It definitely, if you are an old school RPG or strategy person, you are well familiar with the isometric format. But even more real recently, we've got things like Farmville, etc. That That's isometric. And now there is support for them, including uh, per tile sorting and optimized dynamic batched rendering. So hopefully you should actually get decent performance. And the nice thing is designers will now be able to make their characters go behind buildings, trees, and other objects which is pretty much a must and something you had to hack together before. There's also been 2D animation support improvements, basically uh, scale better with both complex uh, multi-sprite characters as well as a large number of characters. HD Pipeline has also had improvements. There are a number of much asked for features, including mesh decals, stacklit shaders with enabling filmic quality, reflection systems, which give greater, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, so you get the idea. Basically, high def pipeline improved. Memory profile, new memory profile is a tool that unless you add, lets you investigate native and managed memory allocations as well as objects and connections between them. Um, so you need to look behind the hood to help figure out what's going on with your memory usage. There is now a memory profiler. Once again, a preview as was the HD render pipeline still labeled as preview. Now, the cool thing is the prefab that we were talking about earlier, no longer a preview. So ready for prime time in theory. Uh, new default scripting runtime. So welcome to the modern world, Unity developers. You can now use C Sharp 7.2. In fact, it is the enabled scripting engine out of the box. Um, so that means cool thing is they're also using the Rosalind compiler, which is made available by Microsoft. So you should see Unity stick with the current version of C Sharp from now and the rest of time. I'd like to think that the whole reason holding back C Sharp wasn't just they were too cheap to license an updated version from Mono, uh, but it's starting to feel that way. But regardless, for all of you C Sharp developers, uh, it, you know, the, the, the language is just improving in great ways, and now you can use the language to its fullest extent. So I imagine this is going to break some things. The old .NET 2.0 runtime has been deprecated. The default script is going to be from 4. Point oh, wait, wait. Phew. Oh, they're only, oh, they're only defaulting to 4.x here. Uh, but you'll be able to make use of Roslyn and 7.2. Okay, I read that a little bit wrong. My apologies. I, I misled you a bit. We're still mildly in the Stone Ages, but you can use 7.2 language features. 
And we've got editor improvements. This is kind of cool. Project settings and preferences uh, were merged together. Uh, window is now dockable, searchable, making interaction with its content much more convenient. Also improved editor tabs by adding selection highlights, making them scale with text length, the ability to scroll through open tabs if combined with exceeds the boundaries of their window. So it fits better. On top of that, if you haven't already moved up to the 2018 point, I think it was two, might have been one, but I think it was 2018.2, that is where high definition monitor support, HDPI, has finally been added. So no more blurry text uh, combined with these UI improvements, it should be a much nicer working experience. And then finally, we get into the full on release notes. I'll link these down below along with the abridged version. And what you can tell here is that 2018.3 is all about the fixes and the breaks. Uh, basically, I like the new release schedule that Unity has going on. Um, there's definitely going to break new things when you add a whole new rendering pipeline and that kind of stuff, and they're rapidly fixing them. But 2018.3, other than the prefab support, isn't really breaking the mold on their new functionality. You know, new isometric maps are definitely a nice thing, but it's by no means, you know, a game changer. It's not going to break other lying systems. So this release is all about making things work better. So if you've had bugs with 2018.1 and 2018.2, I think you'll find the 2018.3 beta, as you can see from my current scrolling and continuous scrolling and ongoing scrolling, there have been a lot of bug fixes in this release. So if you experienced a crash with one of the earlier betas, I think you really want to get up to 2018.3. From the looks of things, this is just kind of a stability release. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, nested prefabs is awesome. It's gonna change the way people work, but these fixes are also kind of the unsung hero of a new release. You can't just keep releasing new stuff uh, if it's crap and it doesn't work. So nice to see a ton of new releases here. You can, of course, grab the new release. It's already available on the Unity Hub. You can go ahead and download. I think you can also still grab the standalone installers if you wish. Um, but yeah, that is Unity 2018.3 beta. Some pretty exciting stuff in there. Definitely the prefabs are awesome. Uh, but let me know what you think. Are you using it? You experienced bugs? Did your bugs go away? Did you check out Gaia? If not, hey, check that video out as well because theoretically it works with the high def pipeline too. I'm going to check that out myself as soon as I'm done this. So hope you found that useful and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.